If you watch my videos, you probably know that I think the Smith & Wesson 686 is the best handgun ever made. I even have a video where I talk about why the Smith & Wesson 686 is the best handgun ever. If you click the link up here in the corner, you can go watch that video if you want to. Now, I know a lot of people will say that if John Browning didn't design it, it couldn't possibly be the best gun ever. But, you know, I disagree. Now, I will say that John Browning was a genius, but Samuel Colt was a god. And Smith & Wesson, they're artists. They refined God's work to where it was perfect. Now, because people know I like the Smith & Wesson 686 so much, and a lot of people agree with me that it is the best gun ever, a lot of people will ask me, what's a good holster for the Smith & Wesson 686? And sadly, I have to tell them there's not a lot of great holsters for the 686. Now, there's a lot of like cowboy style holsters, and there's some good outside the waistband holsters. Uh, DeSantis makes one, Bianchi, Galco, etc. They all make multiple holsters for the 686 in different barrel lengths, but most of them are outside the waistband. So if you carry outside the waistband, that's great, but a lot of people ask me, what's the best inside the waistband holster? Well, that I can't tell you because I don't carry inside waistband. Now, there are some made and there's some smaller custom makers that make them. You know, some of the big companies make them, some of the smaller companies make them, etc. But they're just not great. I have to say that revolvers inside the waistband aren't the best gun. Because of the way they sit, the way they sit kind of low to the grip here, if you put them in your waistband, it's really hard to get a good grip on them to where when you draw them, you don't have to readjust your grip. And they're really not that comfortable in your waistband. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible to get one that sits inside the waistband easily, but you're going to have more luck with the shorter barrels than the longer because all the weight is back here on a revolver. It's all from the cylinder back pretty much. The barrels don't add a whole lot of weight. So if you set it in the waistband high enough that this part of the gun was out good enough to get a good grip on it, there'd be too much weight above your waistband and it wouldn't be very stable. So that's one big problem with making a good inside the waistband holster for revolvers like these. It's not an insurmountable deed, but it's not likely that it's going to happen. You're not going to find very many that are good. Well, let's say you're someone that wants an outside the waistband holster. Well, there's still some questions that people ask me a lot. They say they have trouble finding one that fits their barrel length. Well, the 686 comes in a lot of different barrel lengths, you know, two and a half inches, three inches, four inches, six inches, eight inches, you know, they, they come in a lot of different sizes. Now, if you're going to be carrying it, you're probably going to be carrying the 4-inch or smaller. And they make a lot of holsters for the 4-inch, and people will ask me, will all the others fit in the one for the 4-inch? Yes, they will. If it's a 4-inch model, it'll fit all these models. And if it's for these models, and it's an open bottom, you can put the 4-inch in it. It's just going to stick out the bottom. A lot of holsters are open bottoms and allow the barrel to stick out. But I don't like that because then you bang your barrel on stuff or get it scratched up, or people can see it sticking out underneath your shirt instead of just seeing leather. So I don't like that. So if you're someone that wants one that fits your gun better, if you want to find like a three inch one, you can't find one, you can find a four inch one, but you can't find a three inch one. Well, there are companies that make the three inch one, but say you want to buy one you find in the store. If you buy a four inch leather one and it's an open bottom, you can often sew it together. I did that recently with some holsters for another gun and I'll link that video up here in the corner too, where I actually sewed the bottom closed on ones made for a longer barrel and then they fit the shorter barrel perfectly. Now, the question I get most often about these guns when it comes to holsters, and the main reason I wanted to make this video, is about the diameter of the cylinders. Because these guns come in six rounds or seven rounds. You can get one with a six shot capacity or a seven shot capacity. And people always ask me, is the seven shot capacity cylinder bigger? And the answer is they are not. They are the same diameter, around one and a half inches, regardless of whether they're the six round capacity or the seven round capacity. Now, the question of whether they will fit in the same holster, whether they're six round or seven round, is a different question. And the answer to that is, no, they will not, not without some modification. Now, if you get one with an unfluted cylinder and your holster is made for an unfluted cylinder, that's fine. They'll all fit in it. But most of them aren't made for unfluted cylinders. They're fluted. And you'll notice if you have a six shot cylinder and a seven shot cylinder, the fluting is different. So the fluting in the holster will be different. The little indentations in the kydex or the leather will be different and won't line up with the indentations on your cylinder. But you can fix that. If it's kydex, just heat it, uh, take a wooden dowel in there and rub it around until you flatten them out. Then you can put an unfluted cylinder in it. You'll have to do that if you buy one that has a fluted cylinder and you've got one with an unfluted cylinder. You have to do that anyway. But if you do that with one of these guns because you've got the different uh, cuts in the cylinder here, you just do the same thing. Just flatten it out to where it's like an unfluted cylinder, then your gun will fit in it. Just make sure you don't do it in a way that you damage the retention of the holster and you shouldn't just taking those indentations out. Now, if it's leather, you have to do it a little differently. You either have to steam it 
Or if there's no metal on the holster, if it's just all leather, you can stick it in the microwave, get it hot, bring it out, reshape it a little bit by hand first with the wooden dowel, then just stick the gun in it, let it cool, should reshape to the gun. Now I will answer one more question that isn't about the 686, but it is about 357 Magnum revolvers that are in this class. A lot of people see the newer ones that are eight shots, like the 327, the 627, etc. And they say, well, is that cylinder bigger? Well, yes, that cylinder is bigger. That cylinder is 1.7 something uh, inches in diameter. So it's a little bit bigger than these. It's almost a quarter inch bigger, not quite. It's more like a fifth of an inch. And there's a good reason for that. The 686 is on the K frame, and the K-frame and the L-frame are medium frame guns. They're the medium size frame that Smith & Wesson makes. The 327, the 627, they come on an N-frame, which is actually a frame for a 44 Magnum. So on the frame for the 44 Magnum, the cylinder is the same size as the cylinder on the 44 Magnum. It's 1.7 inches thick instead of 1.5. So it's about a fifth of an inch thicker. The only real difference is they cut the cylinder back a little bit to make it the same length as the 357 Magnum round. That's why you end up with that big space right here between the front of the cylinder and the front strap of the gun. And you end up with that big forcing cone right there. And I hate that look, which is why I don't own one, but I kind of would like a 327, you know, the lightweight one, the scandium and titanium. I would like to have that one. So I hope that answers your questions about these guns and choosing the right holster for them. It's not going to be easy to find the right holster. And Every holster is different for every person, so I could even tell you which one was the best, even if I knew a lot of them that were really great. Just keep in mind, you're going to have to find one for the right barrel length, or you're going to have to make some slight changes to it. And if you choose one for an unfluted cylinder or a seven round versus a six round, you're going to have to make some slight changes to the holster to make it work. But overall, you can find a great holster if you just put a little effort into it, and then you too can carry the best gun ever made.